community and the African Union. We have written to these bodies and have said, uh, to have meetings with them on the deepening and increased political crisis. And of course, the question of reform, which we think is at the center of Zimbabwe's vicious disputed election that they've been uh, visiting this country since uh, 1980. We, of course, uh, also call to Zimbabweans and young people in particular to continuously uh, accept this call to register them to vote because we believe that at the center of the Zimbabwean legitimacy problem is elections and we need participatory uh, engagement with our people in terms of uh, making sure that we resolve uh, the crisis in Zimbabwe as we had and enter into the shadows of the next election. We also want to thank, uh, as I'm concluding, we want to thank uh, Zimbabweans who have continued to show support against difficulties. You know that we went to a by-election after the assault to the pro-democracy movement, but we continue to exist. We came in new form and character and launched a new vehicle that has uh, swiped and uh, been present across the land and breadth of our country. And we want to salute and thank Zimbabweans who have stood firm against clearly state-sponsored violence, against brutality. We want to thank ordinary people, members of the Citizens' Coalition for Change, who have remained vigilant in the face of authoritarian consolidation and, of course, authoritarian tutelage in the democratic platform in our country. Fellow members of the media, fellow Zimbabweans, this is our press brief for this week. You know that we have begun the culture of briefing the media that's why this week we focus on the deepening uh, political crisis. I will take uh, questions uh, if they are ended. Thank you. Okay, my name is Willy Kotiba, I'm a freelance reporter. Uh -huh. um, in what you term deepening political crisis, you indicated that in the last uh, press conference that you are engaged in static. Uh, would you, by any chance, give us an update of? What is the feedback that is actually coming from from that uh, block? Uh, thank you very much. We were to be we were meant to be aware of the Troika summit that is happening, and uh, we have received a favorable response, particularly the acknowledgement of our letters from these regional bodies, which we think is a positive uh, outlook for the pro-democracy movement, and we look forward to have uh, meetings with the uh, SATIC and AU and other. Uh, uh, institutions and all the other regional international players who care, particularly in and around the issue of elections in this country being held free and fair, because at the center of our engagement is the issue around reforms. Because we believe that once we resolve the issue around reforms, it means that there is no disputed outcome and there is no disputed leadership. Because at the center of the Zimbabwean problem, we argue and continue to submit this fact. That is about legitimacy, it's about governance. We have got a disputed leadership, a leadership that governs without the mandate of 49 people. So the case of a broken down social contract is the reason why our economy is collapsing and is of course is the reason why we see corruption being the dominant language in the entire body politic of our country. So that's why we are pushing that development, hoping that uh, we are going to be getting favorable response, uh, particularly for our neighbors because you know that our domestic problem has become a regional issue and even a domestic crisis to the South African government. Also, if more than 2 million Zimbabweans that have crossed as economic and political <coughs> refugees uh, to South Africa, therefore, our partners and neighbors in the African region must have the obligation and responsibility. Of course, we are doing what we could domestically to push the envelope of reform. That's why we are going to be launching our document, um, very soon called Prepare which is basically a document that captures seven minimum reforms that we think must be uh, articulated and we call for a conversation with different political players in this country, the media and of course the church, the students, to come so that we have a national conversation, a national dialogue around reforms so that we resolve the elephant in the room, which is the issue of disputed elections. So we call for all who can about the stability of our country, all who care about good governance, all who care about the future of our country, so that we have a collective conversation around what, in our view, are the minimum reforms 
that must be implemented ahead of the 2023 election so that we don't have a disputed leadership. Thank you. So just a quick uh, follow up. Okay. I, I followed uh, uh, Mr. Nelson Chamisa's uh, address in Chinoy, and he actually indicated that with or without reforms, um, uh, he will still triumph in the 2023 elections. Does it mean that uh, reforms to Triple C are maybe of no value? First, uh, I think it's not he, it's we, the people of Zimbabwe. We, the ordinary people, are going to emerge victorious in 2023 election. And President Chamisa, as the leading political figure and undisputed leader of the citizens' movement, will definitely usher us and lead us towards uh, our path uh, to democratic breakthrough. There is no doubt, we have no doubt in our mind that we are going to win 2023 elections. We are saying this not out of political rhetoric. If you read the Afrobarometer report, it's showing that the Citizens Coalition for Change support is surging while the regime in Salisbury support is declining. Those are scientific signs that show that there is overwhelming consensus within the ordinary people in our country that Zimbabwe needs change that Zimbabwe is exhausted of nationalist rhetoric which has not transformed the concrete realities of ordinary people. We have won, if you follow the election uh, in, in Bulilima as an example, we won against state repression, we won against patronage. That's why we are moving under the philosophy of winning against all odds. Because it's not an easy thing to get almost 50% in Gokwe, given the violence that happened, more than eight government ministers were there. More than 28 vehicles were barricading the roads. Violence became the order of the day. President Chamisa was not allowed his freedom of movement, freedom of assembly, and right to gather with ordinary people in Gokwe Kabuyu. That's why we thank them in particular, because they then voted for us against these difficulties. This is also happening at the background of weaponization of food, Politics of patronage has been dominating the political landscape in our country. But our people have still, particularly in the countryside, you know that one of the words that we want in Bulilima is a word that has been controlled and dominated by Zahan since 1980. But we managed to grab that seat as the alternative. We managed to win against the difficulties. So it's a clear sign that we push the envelope of reform. We think that there must be reform not for the selfish benefit of individuals within the rank and file of the alternative, but it's for the benefit of ordinary people. It's even for the benefit of the government itself. Because the government must rule with legitimacy. That's why we call it a government for the people, by the people, for the people. And it must derive its legitimacy and its mandate to govern from the ordinary people. And they do so through the, uh, 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 the uh, election that happened every five years in our country. So reforms are important not for Triple C. They are important for Zimbabwe's governance culture. You, we want to engage with the international players. We want to return Zimbabwe back to legitimacy. We do that after we have made sure that our domestic programs and processes <coughs> are done in a manner that satisfies everyone. So that when we go to bring Zimbabwe back into the international uh, 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 community, everyone is consensus. And we must, as Triple C, be able to congratulate the winner. And the loser must be able to congratulate us if we image the winner as science. Uh, are telling in the current uh, <coughs> political environment. Thank you. <coughs> yes. Um, during your Chinoy thank you rally, two members of the press were harassed. What do you have to say as a party in terms of journalist security and uh, concerning members of your security?